Hi. All right. Hello, everybody. This is John, and uh, you're watching the SEO Wise Beta Group Hangout. It's a group hangout, and we're lucky this evening to have Mark Traphagen from Bronte Marketing, who's going to talk with us about stuff going on with authorship and author rank and PubCon and Matt Cuts and all sorts of exciting news. Uh, but first, I just want to introduce everybody. This uh, this hangout happens once a week. It's part of the Wise program. Uh, everybody in here, other than Mark and Alex and Zach, uh, are students. Gordon? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was some interesting noise. Uh, totally cool. Uh, these are hangouts, so they're supposed to be fun. They're supposed to be relaxed. We're not trying to produce quality television here. We're just trying to help each other learn stuff. So I'm going to start with Alex on the left of the film strip. I'd like her to introduce herself, and we'll go all the way across to Zach, and then we will open it to questions for Mark. All right. Um, I'm Alex. I construct the newsletters for the WISE program, and I have become the voice of the brand, which is a terrifying term, but I'm working on it. Awesome. Gordon? <clears throat> Gordon, can you hear me? Do you want to introduce yourself? You have to unmute your, click your mute, or unmute yourself. All right, well, I can't tell if you're frozen there, Gordon, so... Let's move on. Jim, Sally? We're Jim and Sally Peterson. Yes, you are. Actually, he's Jim. And she's Sally. <laughs> Thanks You're for that Sally. clarification. I was confused. Yes. <laughs> well, I didn't want you to think we were joined at the hip. And I must say, I must say, John, I absolutely love the concept of being able to unmute ourselves. That's really cool. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And where we have a little difficulty communicating, that stirs up the fact that my book is on communication and listening. <laughs> and maybe I'll read it again and learn something. <laughs> I'm, I am still very interested to see how you and Gordon interact and the conversations that happen there because you guys have a lot of crossover stuff. Yes, we do. Yeah. Very excited. What, before we move on to the film strip, i got to say, one of the most awesome things that I did not expect to get out of this program was the interaction between you guys. Realizing who can relate to who and who can, you know, how you guys can help each other with content is one of the coolest things. Wasn't even planned, so just got to say that. Made my day the other day when I saw that. And I'm John, and I started this program. Kathleen? Kathleen. I'm Kathleen Colvin, and I recently finished a novel on entitled Mark Anthony's Best Wife, a uh, historical fiction set in ancient Rome. Yes, you did. Woo! Mark? Hi, I'm Mark Trapagan. I'm uh, Director of Digital Outreach with Verante Incorporated in the Research Triangle of North Carolina. Uh, we're a small boutique, uh, I guess you could call it SEO, or search marketing agency, helping uh, small to medium uh, and increasingly larger businesses. And uh, my specialty is in the area of the intersection of social media and search, uh, SEO. Uh, and in particular, for the last two, almost two and a half years, uh, been specializing in Google Plus and just really taking a deep dive into seeing way, the way that Google Plus integrates into everything in Google and how that affects everything else. Uh, so that's been my deep study for the last two and a half years. Okay. Walt? Uh, Walt Sosha, I also do all, um, historical stuff, alternative history, but I'm a little bit more current than Kathleen. I'm around 11th century. And I thought I was retired, but I'm finding that I am uh, working harder now than um, when I had the day job. So this is partially due to SEO-wise, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, well, you're kicking it, Walt. You're really kicking it. So it's, yeah. Thank you. Everybody in this bunch is working their butts off, I have to say. It's, it's been awesome. Zach? Uh, hi, I'm Zach Palm. I just started working out. For, I working working for John about four weeks ago, maybe like less than a month ago, and I'm I'm still pretty new to Google Plus overall. And I it's, I have quite a bit of fun learning from John. Really, it's fun. Oh yeah, of course it's fun. I'm always smiling, <laughs> trying to. 
That's because it's been one month, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need another few weeks. Give that guy a little more time. Thanks. Thanks, Sally. Yeah, you <laughs> bet, <that>, John. <laughs> okay. So we now, uh, we've now inter done introductions. Did, anybody, did everybody get an opportunity to read at least the summary post um, about what's going on uh, and, and what Mark had to say uh, about the PubCon uh, video? We've, we've been packing, so we're behind and haven't done that. I noticed it there, but that's as far as I got. All right. Well, let me I just give a quick recap. What, what, what? I was just saying, I just skimmed it, so please, your recap would be good. Yes, me too. All right. Well, this is just the thousand foot level. Uh, you know, the debate rages on, and you guys have seen it in Google, and you see the post from Mark and other people constantly about. You know, is authorship real? Is author rank real? What are they doing? What, you know, what does it mean? And how do we utilize them? And what should we be doing? And there's lots of argument and discussion and correlations and causations and well, actually a lot of complete utter crap being spoken about how it really works and what's going on. Um, recently, Matt Cutts, and you all should know who Matt Cutts is from going through the program at this point. Matt Cutts goes around and makes statements, and the beauty about Matt Cutts' statements is we all try to overanalyze them and determine what they mean beyond just statements. Um, in, in a ways, it reminds me very much like the Bible. What did Jesus have to say, and how much are we going to tear it apart and, and, and find new meaning in it? Right? <laughs> um, oh, you're stepping on toes now. I know, I know. I can, I can take it from religion into politics and make it really dangerous. Uh, <laughs> Reminds me of Ben Bernanke, the chairman of the uh, Federal Reserve. You know, yeah. he can he can oh. say one uh, adjective in you know added to a sentence, and it makes Wall Street go up or down a hundred points. Yep. Right. Uh, and that that's what happens in our world with with Matt Cutts. Uh, people parse every word that he says and and try to drain every bit of meaning out of it. Yep. Oh. Well, and and let's be honest, a lot of us that's how they make we make our living is by interpreting what cuts and other people say and just, you know, bringing that information down to an, a level that we can understand um, for everybody else. But I want to make a clear distinction before we talk about what was talked about, and that is, for most of us, and I'm not even sure, Veronte may be at a point where you're large enough that, that you actually are looking at very fine details. For my company and for most everybody else in here, we're, we're small potatoes. It's not necessary to look at the details. It's only necessary to understand the foundational aspects of what you need to accomplish. If you ever exhaust use of the foundational aspects, then you're really in a competitive market or you've opened yourself to so many markets that you have no choice. So we're going we're gonna to talk about what it means, and then we're basically going to say what it really means is just get to work. Right? And, and in my opinion, Matt Cutts' message is just go to town. And, and Mark said it beautifully earlier, like all this stuff Google's been telling us for years, just get up there and write good content and it'll, yeah. it'll do its job. It actually does that now. That's what the semantic, contextual, historical-based web is, is about. Yeah. So um, that being said, the story was really what did, what did Matt Cutts say and of course, there was a lot of you know discussion around it, and Mark uh, wrote a very nice post, kind of summarizing what had happened and his take on the events. Um, Mark, do you want to add anything to that about as far as details? Or? Yeah, just uh, the overview is that this is this speech is the one we look forward to every year. Matt speaks a lot. They have uh, he mentioned during the the keynote speech at PubCon that uh, they have some I think he said twelve or fourteen people basically who do this all the time, who travel to conferences and events and, and speak. And, uh, but but Matt's, the, Matt's the main guy. Uh, he's the one everybody pays the most attention to. And he always saves at PubCon for the, the biggest new revelations, as revealing as they are or aren't. Uh, it's kind of the you know, state of search speech every year, the state of the union for, for Google search. And the thing, uh, the thing to pay attention to if... Uh, if you ever watch, Matt does a lot of videos. They're usually like just you know one and a half to three minute videos where he answers people's questions, everything up to these speeches that he does at conferences. You'll hear my you know I've made a humorous comparison to Ben Bernanke, but it really is like that. He 
uh, he's in the position that he is because he's a very careful speaker. And we always have to remember that Google walks a delicate balance with all of us who are out there who have to depend on Google and use Google for our, our businesses. The delicate balance is they need us uh, to a certain extent. They need us to be happy. They, they know that um, they wouldn't exist without us because we create the need for their search service to a large extent. But on the other hand, um, they don't want to give too much. So they want to give us some information, enough to get us in hopefully the right directions. But they don't want to give us too much because then people try to game the system. Uh, you know, Google uh, search can be tremendously profitable, uh, especially in certain commercial sectors. Being on the first page of Google and then being in the first few spots at the top can make the difference literally of millions of dollars to businesses. So when there's that kind of pressure, when there's that kind of incentive where money is to be made, uh, people being what they are, um, will try to find ways to shortcut it. And the whole game, if you will, of SEO, for uh, ever, ever since Google came into existence especially, has been this game of trying to figure out what makes Google work. Um, that's done either by, as we were talking about here, listening carefully to the statements that they make, but more so in, in the SEO industry where I work, it's been done by trying to kind of back engineer the algorithm, to try to do all kinds of scientific and correlative testing out there to try to figure out what factors make things rank higher in search. And then, of course, once you think you've found those, you want to do more of them. So without getting too deep at this point, that's why when Matt speaks, it sometimes sounds like, did he really say anything? Or he said something, but then again, if I really look at it carefully, like, did he tell me anything useful? Did he give me any details? That's why he talks that way. It's, it's very political. So uh, I'll stop there, John, but that's just kind of an overview of, of the approach and what this kind of thing is. But that doesn't mean it's not valuable. Uh, and you know we'll take the deeper dive in a moment here. Excellent. Yeah, that it's it's it is valuable, but like you said, we have to. I'll take it all with a, a many grains of salt. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I I would like to I want to open it up to questions, but I want to ask you something, Mark, because you you said you we you know I've been in the I've been in the the SEO game for about eight years, and in the beginning. It was very much. How do we trick it? How do we game it? How do we work around? And we, you know, you know the tools that were out there years ago. The, the, you know, the content. Uh, 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 the, hang on a second. Boy, that's horrible. Have a Skype show up in the middle of a hangout. <laughs> that's like that could bring the universe to an end. Uh, totally. Well, actually, it is at this point because I don't know exactly what Microsoft did to Skype lately, but all it does for me is beach ball. Oh dear. So that that's lovely. All right. Well, well let's hope this doesn't crash the. Uh... Okay. Well, while you're you know while you're adjusting that, uh, yeah. I'm going to say yeah that we've moved from uh, the, the this is getting the phrase is getting almost hackneyed, but I think it's still useful. Uh, Amat Singh, who's one of the main engineers who works on brilliant brilliant guy, who's uh, as close to the Google algorithm as anybody any human being is. Uh, he's called it the movement from strings um, to things. And what that means is by strings here, we don't mean the stuff your kitten plays with, but uh, in the world of, of, uh, of science and mathematics and linguistics um, and computers, a string is a group, a group of symbols. Um, and in particular, a group, say, like even a group of words, phrases. So think in terms of keywords. Um, much of what search has been driven is by, by keywords, as some of you may understand. Uh, and those are still important, but in the past they were the only, pretty much the only thing. Basically what a search engine did was it would index documents and look for these key phrases in the document and remember that. And then when somebody entered in the search engine those same words, it would try to match them up with that, with that page. Uh, and of course then there's a whole ranking thing that, that comes in and that's what gets complicated. So the better you can match and the more signals you had pointing at your page that reinforced that those keywords were what your page was about, the more likely the search engine would bring you up higher when people search for those words. And that began the, all the games that John was talking about, where people, that those signals mostly came through, and still do, through, through links from other sites. That's the, that's the basic engine behind Google. Links are like votes. And 
so that even the text in the link. So one of the games would be go out and pay a website to put in uh, an exact match link to the keyword to your site with the keyword that you're trying to rank for. And that led to ridiculously, I think if you've been on the internet long enough, you've probably seen sites where you can tell that this is what they were doing. It'll be like, you'll be reading some vague article about, a, you know, isn't it nice to be out on a lovely day in spring and wouldn't you like a Detroit payday loan? You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and the Detroit payday loan, of course, is linked, guess what, to a website that's about Detroit payday loans. Um, well, that's the kind of stuff that just was ruining the web and ruining search, and Google needed to get rid of that. And one, they've been doing that both kind of uh, offensively and defensively. The offensive side has been, in the last couple of years, they've been uh, getting smarter and smarter about building into their search algorithm uh, detections, detectives that go out and they can detect the patterns of people who are doing these manipulative things. And when they get enough evidence about your website, that your website has enough evidence pointing at it that you've been trying to manipulate the search results, they will actually penalize you. Um, your, your site will just drop in the search rankings, and your traffic will drop, and if you're a business, you know, uh, you're losing lots of money and maybe even going out of business. So that was the offensive strike. But they weren't just on the offensive. They were also, um, defensive is probably the wrong opposite term here, but they were building something positive. And that's, you know, again, as John has talked with you about the, the semantic search, um, the advent of Hummingbird in the last two months, uh, Google authorship, all of these things are building a web that's less and less dependent on those simplistic kind of link matches, but a web where the machine, the Google machine, under, begins to understand the connections between things on the web, and that's where we move from strings to things. The things now are you and me, and our websites, and our businesses, and places like Paris, Texas, or Paris, France. Uh, Google was an entity, a thing, they, they, they technically call them entities. Um, all these different things, and the ability for the machine algorithm to learn as it watches us interact on the web. It's part of it's actually learning. How do we relate to things? What things have meaning in context for us? And the better it learns that, then it can look at our content on the web and begin to understand it more and more in the way that we understand it. When we read something, if it's a good piece of writing, it sets off all kinds of, you guys are writers, a lot of you, you, you understand this. You know, words have denotations and connotations. And it's, it's the connotations that the machine is actually beginning to understand. Um, so the bottom line of all that, is that quality, richly contextual writing and content of all kinds as, as we go on is going to be the trigger that really helps you to get found in search much more than trying to manipulate phrases and keywords as it might have been in the past. Yes, yes. Well said. And so now you've heard it from Mark that the web truly was made for writers. We just have to take that stuff and convert it to web writing. Right. That's the, and Mark, this is the reason I started with writers, because I wanted to start with the group of people who actually needed the most, because you and I know that at the beginning, SEO people <clears throat> weren't exactly the best writers. We were good technical implementers, right? Mm -hmm. So the the Google has has brought it to the story, to the conversation, and and that's that when Mark talks about semantic relationships, Google's just looking at the conversation. And so the, the effort we put into Google Plus, and the reason I, I, I say your effort in Plus is paramount, is because that's where the conversation is happening, and that's where the conversation, that's where you get credit for it. I'm going to stop there and just, who has a question for Mark, or who has anything they'd like to say about any of this stuff? Mark, um, Sally here. I, uh, Hi, Sally. Would you say that it's a decent analogy to say that Google Plus is now, or Google is now in the process of learning to recognize people's um, uh, conversation and writing and their, that sort of thing the way that people do? Yes, very much so. I, we're still in the infancy of this. Uh -huh. um, here's something I often compare it to. Um, how many of you remember the movie um, 
2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and uh, most of us, not all of us are here, are old enough to remember that. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> one of the things about that movie, it was actually, of course, a novel by, by Arthur C. Clarke first. He uh -huh. was a great science fiction writer. And way, way ahead of all this technology that we are today, way back in the, you know, in, in the 1970s, um, Arthur Clarke received a, a day when there would be computers that would learn like human beings. And if you remember HAL, HAL 9000 was the computer that ran the whole spaceship in, in 2001 A Space Odyssey. And um, HAL was bent on the mission, and he, HAL decided that the humans in the spaceship were going to ruin the mission, so he was actually killing the humans. And one of the humans, Dave, you know, got outside the spaceship, got inside the computer, and long story short, he began to shut Hal down. He was kind of pulling out memory drawers. And one of the, the interesting thing there was that the way they showed this in the movie, because in the book you get all this explanation about how how Hal came to be. In the in the movie, you just see Dave pulling out these memory drawers, and you hear Hal regressing. Hal's voice gets simpler and simpler, and he starts singing nursery rhymes and, yes. and doing, you know, one plus one equals two. And yeah. This is the song my teacher taught me on our mm -hmm. first day. So what the picture you get is how was taught. Now, the way it's really happening in, in what Google is doing, and Google is, is really uh, very much at the forefront of this kind of artificial intelligence research, is it's not somebody sitting down in the schoolroom and teaching the computer, but... The, the Google algorithm works on a, um, an, uh, it's on a feedback alg algorithm. So it goes out and it observes and searches what we're doing. And then it, it watches and when cert it watches the reactions between things and how people interact and how they, how they speak, um, how they write, and, and how other people then, what words link to that. When, when I write about this and other people link to it or point to it or talk about it, what do they say? And it begins to see the patterns. So it's, it's learning by observation. And I guess in some ways it's really kind of the way a human baby learns, by listening and observing, mm -hmm. and, and the machine is doing that. Mm -hmm. So here's why that's important. Um, it's all very interesting and academic, but why that's important to us is, uh, and where Google Plus really fits into this, this is the thing that I saw two and a half years ago and why I have committed my life to studying and understanding Google Plus in particular ever since. It's, this was not just another social network. This was Google building the infrastructure to teach their machine, and we are all part of that when we participate in Google Plus. It's, but when we, when we enter Google Plus, you know, we give it our identity, whether it's your personal profile, that's your person, Mm -hmm. uh, your brand page, that's your business. Now, now Google knows who those are, and now the algorithm can watch. How do those relate to each other? How does that relate to everything else that you do on the web? How does that relate to who are the other people who interact with you? And what happens when they interact with you? And when you write about this, you get this kind of response. But when you write about this, you get a different response. All of that is part of, with a lot of other things that Google is out there doing, I mean, there's things like, it's, it's just, it, I can go on forever, but it's like, you know, you know why Google wanted to have a telephone? Why Google bought Mot Motorola and developed, uh, well, they developed Android first, the operating system, and then bought Motorola? It's, it's not about just having another product. It is that, but it's far more than that. They figured out, and this is why they, they put in Google Voice years ago, that all this voice transmission that's going on, all the texting, all the voice transmission, is data that their algorithm can analyze and learn from. Um, they're actually learning from that as well. So everything that's an input into Google is part of this learning process. So again, bringing it back down to the practical, it means the more connections that we make and the more contextually rich we are online, the, more, the better a picture that Google has of us, of who we are, of what makes us tick, and of what in us makes other people respond. And the more you do of that, the more the machine is going to feed back and say, you know, when, when Kathleen writes about this, um, other people respond, and they respond in a positive way, and they start linking to other things out here. We, Google wants more of that, so we're going to pump Kathleen up and make her more visible to more people. And, and that makes Kathleen smile, as you can see. <laughs> Well, Mark, can I can I jump in for a question for you? Sure. You've seen a lot of things, and um, 
and been around for a while and I'm stuck on the quality rich contextual writing. People like myself and Walt here write uh, fiction. Mm -hmm. So if you were starting out, um, I think I'm, I'm ready to go, but Walt's still writing. Um, what would you do to start your career in Google Plus or Google um, if you were a fiction writer? That's a great question. Uh, yeah, because we're talking, we're really making a distinguishing here between the writing that you do, in, in some senses, that there's overlap, but in some senses, the writing that you do as your, your writing profession um, and the writing that you're going to do online. And I, I think we're speaking here in particular in terms of promoting. Let's, let's be yeah. blunt and say it, you know, yourself yeah. and your writing and your, who you are. And that's really bleeding over into the whole area of, of personal branding, which is a, a real interest and love of mine. Um, and I think that's an area that is especially important for authors and, and should resonate with them. Um, it's always been important for an author to become a personal brand. Uh, you know, we all know that there's authors out there that people will buy, the, the book comes out and they'll pre-order it, you know, before they even know what it's about because it's by that author. Um, so to, you know, come back and, and answer your question, um, I would say that you want to be creating online content, engaging with people in ways that, um, that are all around what you write about. So if you write, uh, you said, Kathleen, you write historical fiction about the Historical Roman. fiction set, set in ancient Rome. Okay, ancient but Rome. It's, but it's for women, Mark, and, okay. and uh, part of the, I'm going to inject a, a, a thing I've been questioning about for you to think about as well, which is it's Google Plus is in my, I've read it's more skew, more skewed towards men, so I've got that thing I'm I'm noodling about as well. Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, I, I think that's you know we don't Google doesn't give us a lot of actual uh, figures and, and demographics. They don't, not very often on Google Plus, um, but just my my feeling, and this is anecdotal from just being around, is that that's that's been changing. Uh, it was definitely the case in the beginning. It was heavily skewed male, heavily heavily skewed toward uh, technology people, nerds. Uh, nerds. Yeah, let's just say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The nerds were there. The nerds, yeah. Yeah. the nerds finally had their you know had their playground, uh, and then then all you regular people came in and spoiled it. Um, no, but I think that's I think that is I think that is changing, and I, I see some you know some incredible uh, a lot of incredible women. Uh, gaining, you know, real influence in places of prominence on Google Plus. I see some incredible communities developing. You know, so I think that's that's how. Just just to say that, um, you know, it's still it's still that's still probably developing, but uh, but I think that's changing. Uh, but but more to the point of, of what you were asking, um, I would be thinking about in anything that I'm doing. What is what is the kind of content and engagement that is going to uh, grip my audience. Uh, so, you know, I don't know. For you, that might be uh, getting in or even creating communities about um, fascinating aspects of ancient Roman history or women, you know, women, what was like, I mean, I would love to learn about that. I'm not even a woman, but it's like, that's, we, so, we know so little about women in the ancient world. We uh, do. Yeah. And, and so that, you know, any kind of content, peripheral content, because you, you, I know you're doing research and you're learning tons of stuff. So even while you're writing fiction, you know, you could be getting out content and things like that that's just teaching people about that stuff and drawing people in to want to know more about it that builds the world around, around what you do. And if for me, like, you know, I've, I've, I'm actually a fan of uh, historical fiction. I say a fan. I don't read it all the time, but I, I do enjoy historical fiction. I've read a lot of it. And I've read, you know, I've read stuff that's really good, and I've read stuff that's crap. And you know, what I find is that over time, when you do that, you find the really good authors in that genre are people who um, have, a, with a lot of other things, being good writers, they've done their homework. Um, they've really gone deep into the into the subject. So if I had, if I encountered an author who could talk and engage me about, you know, that. Um, the whole world around what they write about, and and it showed me like uh, they know this inside out, and they can show me all kinds of really cool and neat stuff about it. Then I'm going to be maybe more inclined to want to read your book. Does that make some sense? 
Totally, totally. So tell me, and I hope I don't mean to uh, monopolize, but perhaps this question is good for the rest of us as well. Um, tell me about, I have written posts, and since I'm a newbie, I've, you know, there's been some tweaking that needs to be done, and, and, but tell me, but I've had posts where I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm waiting for the, the pluses, and, and they're not coming. So tell me, what do you think, I'm going to write engaging content, how long, um, Realizing I'm trying to improve all the time. How long do you think it would take in Google Plus if I'm going to write the content which you suggest to have a decent response? <laughs> yeah. um, that's that's a great question. Uh, well, you know, uh, it takes exactly 3.2 months. Um, no, no, no. Oh, well, there uh, you go. Oh, great. <laughs> Our careful research shows that. Um, no, it's you know. Let me tell you a little story about that. It's it's interesting. It's going to sound like it's not about this, but I think it's a great story. There's a guy that I deeply admire named Rand Fishkin who runs a or, organization it used to be called SEO Moz, now just called Moz. Now come on, Seattle. John's nodding his head, knows him well. Um, brilliant entrepreneurial guy and, and a great great guy. But his he often likes to tell a story about his wife, who is a travel writer, a travel blogger, really. And now we can really call her a travel writer because she has a tremendous audience and she actually gets paid for her travel writing. But she started out as just a travel blogger. And she wrote for years you know, on this blog, just faithfully wrote day after day. And he, he shows the graph on, on his presentations. And her, her audience, her you know, uh, people visiting her blog and reading it, um, it grew slowly, but it kind of plateaued. And you know, months and months and months and months, it, it just went like this and like this and like this. And eventually, as you can probably guess where the story's going, Way down the end of the graph, you know, two or three years in, all of a sudden it starts to move upward and upward, and then it what we call hockey sticks, you know, just sh shoots up. Now he overlays something else over that graph, and he says, "Here's where and these are based on actual statistics for bloggers. Um, here's where 10% give up. Here's where the next 20% give up. Here's where the next 30% give up. And when you get like the most interesting part is like right before her hockey stick." is like the part in the line where like 90% of the people in her vertical had given up blogging. Now, that's not to say that everybody who blogs for a certain amount of time or everybody who posts on Google Plus a certain amount of time that, you know, it's automatically going to break free. Obviously, you've got to be doing good stuff for that. But th there's a lesson in just persistence there. And I think in it, when you come into a new social network, it's the same kind of thing. You, you, um, it's I know it's hard. I know it's discouraging to put stuff out there day after day and, you know, not see much reaction to it, not get much engagement. But um, the people who persist, but I wouldn't say only, not only persist, but you've also got to be um, building that network that will like it. And that means going, reaching out, uh, engaging, finding, you know, one of the great things about Google Plus is you have that search. Um, it's the best search of any social network. So you can go and find other people who are talking about your topics enter into their conversation. That's how I got to know John. Um, you know, John uh, was, John Ellis is not somebody I would ever have known. But <laughs> but John began to um, send me money in the mail and the next... Oh, no, uh, <laughs> Tell them that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, said, hey. I said, I will plus one anything you write. Um, <laughs> no, seriously, John, you know, John began to, to show up in my posts and, and giving useful comment. Not, not just coming in and saying, like, great post, Mark, but you know, giving useful comments and adding something to the conversation. And, to, and you know, over time, I got to know his face, and it was like, hey, this is a smart guy. He knows what he's talking about. And that made me want to you know, circle him back and follow him. And then I start to see his stuff, and I start to engage with his stuff, and I start to share his stuff. So you've got to be network building all the time. Uh, you can't just be broadcasting. Uh, one more thing before I get too long-winded here. You know, again, I think the Google Plus communities um, – can be can be a great place for that. I know it's hard because it's like a lot of other things in Google Plus, you can go through a ton of communities and see you know either crickets or spam. Uh, but when you find a good one, or if you can't find a good one, start one. Um, communities, the good ones, are the greatest place now to get concentrated attention on on what you're interested in. Um, so that's just one more one more tip, and that's that's for one of John's advanced classes, but. Um, yeah, uh, I guess to sum up what I'm trying to say is the persistence, but also outreach, network building. Be useful, be helpful, 
be charming to the other people out there so they want to come back and see what you're writing and engage with you. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, lovely. Yes. Okay, i got to jump in there because, first of all, that was beautifully said, and I just want to ask everybody in the program right now, I'm pretty sure that information is already provided, right? <laughs> We've already talked about this stuff. And so, Kathleen, what I want to say is that, you know, I know I know at the beginning... That You're getting sent to the principal's office, Kathleen. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is... No, no, no. No, this is excellent because, because look, Kathleen has been kicking butt in this program, and, and the... When we talked about content, you know, Mark, you were talking about wh where she should go and what she should provide for content. And I was saying, you know, go find mainstream media that relates to what you're talking about, right? So Ancient Rome, that show from HBO, or The Tudors, or anything that's even close to what's going on. Basically, you, you know, you open... The, the, before that, Kathleen, what Mark's talking about is even better. Why don't we just state that you're an authority and start telling us about what, what women did in the history, right? That's oh, direct. I would love to. Sure, that's direct. So make it fun and interesting. But Mark said something he called outreach. Well, at the beginning of your efforts in, in, in Google+, we call that 80-20, right? That 80% of your time should be spent listening and commenting. 20% is spent actually producing content. And so I think when, you know, when I, I got to say this, the fact that, Mark just explained how he discovered me is really awesome because Mark, you have no idea how long I stalked you. Literally, just like, like still does what? Yeah. <laughs> I have I have one finger on the restraining order button right over here. Here goes the tip. But I I mean stalking plus. But the thing is, yeah, yeah when I totally. When I, you know, you know what I mean. When, let's yeah. let's call it what it is. When I joined Google Plus, the first thing I did was one, learn how it how it functioned, right? The mechanics, and then who are the people that are already in here kicking my ass that are related to my industry? Mm -hmm. And I discovered Mark. And when I first and Alex, you know this that when we first found out who he was and who Barante was and what he was talking about, I said we're not ready yet. We can't talk to him yet. We need to get to know this person. We're tiny. We're not at a level yet where he's actually going to pay attention to what we're doing. But we need to get there. And it took, how long did it take, Alex? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know? Quite, a few, quite than, a few months. It took longer than 3.2 months or whatever it was you, you, you said. 3.2. Yeah. yeah. Kathleen wrote that down. <laughs> no, I memorized it. <laughs> that is a bogus figure. Don't you? I know. I know. <laughs> no, no, we're going to plaster it all over the web now. Our traffic. Yeah. Mark said yeah. three part two. Yeah. 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 Um, endorsed. But you know that that's that is so key. And, and you know, I, I kidded John about about stalking, but uh, but I'm the king of stalkers. Uh, that's how I got started on Google Plus. And one of the things that I that I did, and this is a, a great tip. Um, is when uh, when I was first on Google Plus and I began to do exactly what John did. I began to just pay attention, hunt around, see you know who is creating the best conversations in in my industry and in my areas of interest. Uh, who were other people pointing at and listening to and paying attention to? And then I, when I found somebody like that, if they seemed worthwhile, I actually put them in a stalking circle. Um, I called it my VIP circle, but you know. Since Google Plus doesn't show what you call your circles, anybody else you can call whatever you want. You know, uh, my creepy, my creepy stalking circle, um, and I would put those people in because, as you probably know by now, on Google Plus, you can switch over and and look at the stream from just one of your circles. So once I had my, I began to build my stalking circle. I would dedicate myself every day. I would spend a certain amount of my online time just in that stalking circle, and I would spend that time. Com, you know, commenting on their posts, plus wanting, resharing some of their posts, just engaging with them um, in construct again. You know, making sure I had something good to say, uh, not just coming on and saying you know great posts, but offering a helpful advice or asking a question or you know pointing them to a resource that I know about, whatever it might be. Um, and that really worked because that's how people people didn't care that I was a nobody. If I was being helpful, if I was being useful, if I was being interesting, and I would get on their radar, and they would start to talk about me, and they would start to promote my stuff. That's how it grows. So build a stalker, find those people, build a stalker circle, and spend some time in there as much as you can, 
um, engaging with those people. Get keep your face and your presence in front of them. That's that's the way this works. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Anyone want to follow up on that? Did you have anything else you wanted to say, Kathleen, or any questions on that, or well, anything? Actually, I do. Um, my uh, the most uh, plus one that I've got is uh, is what I uh, is a is a, a pumpkin photograph, which is Mark, <laughs> not my not my stuff. It's not Andrew Rome, long ways. But, but it's a um, sign you need to work that into your next novel. No. <laughs> there you go. Oh, kids. No. <laughs> yes. Hey, it wasn't but, cats or bacon. <laughs> no, but it was pretty close. But is there value in? I know. Is there value in? Do you see value in? I mean, I get discouraged because people like the pumpkins more than they yeah. like the uh, who just killed himself. Post. The substantive uh, post, yeah. Yeah. So, is is there value in putting the pumpkins up at, or something like that? Yeah, you know, I here's my. Everybody's gonna have a different take on it. It's just my philosophy on it and my experience. Uh, I am on. Google Plus. Obviously, if you, if you follow me, if you read my stream, you know most of what you're going to see there is um, business oriented or social media SEO oriented. Uh, it's talking about you know this this world of where I where I work and the the world that most people think of as my expertise, my my realm. But I, you know, I put up this morning. You know, I put up a picture of uh, the the leaves are beginning to turn out behind our office. We have this beautiful pond behind the office. I took a picture with my iPhone and, and put that up. Um, you know, I'll, I'll put up funny stuff sometimes. Uh, I think it's just being human, and I think that's that's good. And I've never um, had people react against that, even the people that follow me, because they want my serious, you know, insights into how social media business works. Um, pe it's a social network, you know, and, pe and people over time, you know, these people, people like John. They not only become useful business associates and and you know people that we talk about SEO and stuff like that, but they become friends and and hangouts like that really make that happen. You know, this is the first time John and I have actually we've talked a lot online. This is the first time we've ever talked face to face, and that that really does something. You know, so it's like John's avatar photo looks a lot better than he really does, but you know, but <laughs> I that you know, it's like. You know, <laughs> um, you know, and and the great thing is we can still be friends. Um, but you know, and, and hear what we're doing here. You know, this is this is a great example. So, um, you know, create maybe uh, be creating. Hang on, but well, let me stick more on, on what you. I know your question is really about. I, I know that's frustrating, and it's it's a part of it. It's you know, it's, it happens on any social network. Um, there there are people out there that only want the entertainment, and they're gonna. You know they're gonna plus and and say hey great thumbs up on the on the pumpkin photo, and skip over the snoozy stuff about Brutus's murder, um, and I think that's just just the persistence of you're getting that content out there, so that as you're doing the other part of what we just talked about, where you're reaching out and you're engaging and you're finding and you're building community and you're building networks, that content is there and it and it will have its use one day when people come back. You gotta have that there because as you go and do that outreach, more and more people are going to, you know, take a look at you, and you don't want them to see just pumpkin pictures, right? Know, because those are more engaging. They, you want them to see that substantive content. It's your calling card. Um, so don't get discouraged. You know, keep keep persisting. But um, so much of it is in that outreach. You know, what John said is is really awesome. The eighty twenty. You got to be working that, and that's that's where it happens. And even that takes time, but when it starts to gel, it then it becomes exponential. Right. Uh, I don't I don't do these days any um, you know where I, where I'm at now. I don't spend a lot of time anymore in strategic building. Right. Uh, I don't have to. It it's now like a machine. It, I mean, I got to keep it oiled with the good content and with the engagement and and making doing relationships like I'm doing with all of you right yeah. now. Yeah. But it's but it. But it's amazing to me. I mean, my follower count and my engagement, everything just is growing and growing and growing because my, this sounds horribly egotistical, but it's kind of like my, my minions are out there working for me. You know, I've built this network of people, <laughs> it's true. And, but they really do. And I'm it's, one of his minions. Yeah, I'm a minion. Being, God. Um, so, but, but I'm a minion, I'm a minion of a lot of people, you know, who are bigger and more important than I am or, or more influential than I am. Uh, and I'm, you know, you'll see, you follow my stuff every day, you're going to see a lot in my stream of not just me posting my stuff, 
you're going to see a lot of me sharing other people's stuff. And one of the things, I know not everybody does this, but this another little thing for me is very important to me that every day, at least once, and sometimes may often more than once, I share something from someone who is um, I hate these, you know, these terms are so bad, but somebody who's little, you know, still small, somebody who's not not terribly influential, but has done something awesome or just created a great piece of content or said something wonderful. And I share that to my audience. People did that for me when I was getting started, and now I want to pay that forward. And if you can connect up with people like that, influential people who are somewhat relevant to whatever it is that you are interested in and you talk about, um, and, and you become useful and, and friends to them in a way that they're going to do that for you, that's when you begin to blow up. There it is. Can I, I just want to, I want to interject something into that because you, you hit on some great pieces. So I just want to take a perfect example. Kathleen, right now, I don't remember how many followers you have, but you actually have a good number considering how long you've been working this. Okay? 288. That's fantastic <laughs> for where you're at. Okay? Yeah. My, my, my father has, I think he just hit 100, and he's thrilled. Okay? He doesn't even care because he can talk to other authors, and he's never been able to do that before. Right? For you, let's, you are already at a level where you can do influence. You can help other people. You just have to do it in a different way. So let's say you join a community or you're in a community growing your influence, and somebody does a nice post, and you really like it, and you add a comment to it. Obviously, posting communities, you have to decide whether to share. Ask them for permission. Hey, can I share this? This is really good. I've got some people that I'd like to share this with. Well, you're already connected with other people that have a higher influence. You've got Alex. You've got myself. You know, and, and use us, seriously. But do it strategically. So if, if you relate that story to something that my industry can talk about or that I can come in and talk about and mention me, then now you've given me an opportunity to show up in that search, to be a part of that conversation, to maybe say a little something about what I need to say because it helps me grow my influence, right? That's, that's all we're doing here. I help Mark, Mark helps me, it all just goes around. Right? So you mention me, you, I come in and comment, and now that person sees, wow, Kathleen took my, my post, reshared it, got me some cred, and brought in some guy and some other people that have much bigger influence than I do, and they added comments, and maybe even they'll reshare. Right? So you, there's all sorts of ways where you can be beneficial to people at your level. There's no, you know, Mark's right. When we talk about these who's up here and who's down here, it's horrible to say, but it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not like we're talking kings, queens, and serfs. We're just talking differences in numbers and how we can use those to help each other. That's it, all right? And so your ability to use those mechanics, the social mechanics, to do that, it's get creative, as creative as you can, right? And that's, that's all we're talking about here. You can, you can be moving that dial with two followers because your followers are not what matters. What matters is what you're producing and what you're doing. That's, and the followers will show up. Right? Where, where Mark is at now, and, and Mark... It's interesting because I just crossed the 5,000 follower mark recently. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, but the truth is I was seeing the results I expected out of 5,000 followers a long time ago mm. because you know that when you get to a certain point, and I don't even know what that point is, you just end up gaining followers every day whether you're really yeah. active or not. Right. It starts to, starts to just work, yeah. And, and you know, even, but then sometimes you lose some. I mean, big deal. You'll see times when it negative, but it's all dependent on the activity you do, and you can see that correlation in circle count. Gee, when I'm more active, I have more followers. When I'm less active, I have less gain. I mean, it's so yeah. evident in there. Yeah. At, at, at some point for you, Mark, then you, you, you must have flipped, and this is the other thing, the percentage that I talk about, that 80-20, at some point you're going to change those numbers. Right? I started yeah. off at 80-20. I don't know what I'm at right. Actually, right now I'm at nothing. I'm at, I, I rarely get in here because I'm trying to put this, keep this program <laughs> together right now. But, but you know, that's why we have. I have Alex and Zach and other people, the the the, the minions that were hired to help pr promote what's going on. 
right? Mm -hmm. But but for you guys, or what I'm saying is, it'll reach a point, Kathleen, where mm -hmm. you'll be able to rest. You'll sit back and go, okay, I'm seeing growth, and I did nothing today, right? Or all I did was post a pumpkin picture, and I gained five followers. Sweet, right? So you'll you'll start to see that. Just do what Mark said and be persistent. I shall. I will. Let, let me. Can I, I, this is a crazy idea. I'm just gonna throw this out there, and, and I want to do this for you guys, just for having me here tonight and, and being a part of this. A little little challenge to you, and a, and a big challenge for me. Okay. Um, over the over the next week, the coming week, um, I want each of you here to send me uh, on Google Plus. Does everybody here know how to do a private message on Google Plus? Sure. Okay, you guys are you guys are already yeah you're beta or alphas or zebulons or whatever you are. Um, <laughs> so uh, send send me a private message on Google Plus, and I want you to send me one piece of content that you've posted publicly on Google Plus that you're particularly proud of. Um, you think I did a good job here, you know, but didn't get much engagement. I feel like nobody saw it. If you've got something, send it to me it's next week. Here's what I'm going to do. I will show you that I can find, I don't care what it's about, I'm going to find some way to relate that to my audience out there. And I will reshare it uh, with, you know, with, with my big audience. And, uh, and watch the way I craft that post. Um, that, you know, I, I can take almost anything. Don't send me pornography, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> almost anything. Darn. <laughs> um, <laughs> Really, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, my you know my feed's just riddled with it. Yeah, it's the innocent looking ones. That get that. Um, <laughs> Explains so, messages recently. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but but I will find a way to make that relevant to my audience and and reshare it and let's see what that does for you. Uh, oh. But that's my little my little challenge. So you got that. Thank you, Mark. That, that's yeah. a fabulous thing. Oh, it'll be fun. It'll be Great fun. Thank offer. Thank you. Wow, You're welcome. that is awesome. Thank you so much. And Mark, I'll look for that invoice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anybody else? We're, we're wrapping it up here. We're at 5.59. Mark's on the East Coast. I don't want to keep him late. Anybody have a quick question uh, for Mark before we end this? Um, can, I, can I just ask one? Because we talked a little bit about this, John. I am just curious about um, how you think Mark Hangouts fit into the authorship and how um, how Google is going to use that. Great, great question. Uh, Alex is asking about how it fits into authorship. Meaning, um, I guess what you're meaning. Let me ask this: Is does Google have a way of just as they're obviously they can look at and analyze our writing and begin to understand semantically what your writing is about? And because if we know if you understand authorship fundamentally, it's the intention of it down the road. And this is we didn't even talk much about Matt Cutts' speech, but right. you know, one of the encouraging things in the speech was as vague as it was, he did say, reiterate that they are very much on the task, on the project of identifying the subject area authorities online. They want to know um, in every every different subject who are the people out there. Who are the sites and who are the people who are looked at by others as the authorities on this on this topic? And by the way, at, a, at another conference I was at earlier in the year, where Matt Cutts was also, he was in a Q and A, and this subject came up, and somebody just said, like, "Well, how granular is that? How many how many subjects are there?" And he said, "Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> so, there's that's you can think I." I what I'm hearing in that is I'm thinking like you know Dewey Decimal, like digging way down in the card catalog. We're talking. We're not just talking about you know who's the best in zoology and who's the best in uh, history and who's the best in you know not just those high level categories, but they're going way down into the long tail. So there's opportunities. I just want to throw that in parenthetically. I think there's opportunities um, for very niche people to become in the future the authority in your niche, and you you guys should understand that. You know, there's a lot of success that can happen. You don't have to be the most famous person in the world if you've got a dedicated niche that you own, and that the people who are interested in that thing they're fanatical about you. That's all you need. Um, so that's the first thing is that it's it's that. Now bringing it back to Hangouts. Now that's easy to do in text. Well, Hangouts and videos and things like that aren't text. At this point, 
Not yet. As far as the actual, what we're doing right here, they're still in the infancy of that. And we're really talking here about um, text-to-speech analysis. Um, that technology is coming along amazingly. Uh, if you use a smartphone, you know, these days I know, you know, I, I'm amazed. Uh, like Google has, uh, is so good. At, I, I use the voice search on my, my iPhone a lot with Google. And you know, like 95% of the time, it gets it bang on. It understands what I'm saying, and it, and it pops right up. So they're getting better at that. That's where they're going to go. Eventually, yes. But for now, for a Hangout, where the, the SEO value and the authorship value of that is, is this. Um, when we do a Hangout on air like this, we're creating this permanent content. That goes on your immediately on your YouTube channel. If you're doing things properly, your YouTube channel should be properly hooked up with your Google Plus profile, or if it's a business channel with your with your page. Now Google sees that connection. Now this is a whole area that we don't have time to talk about tonight, but when you post a video on YouTube, you can optimize that video. You should definitely think about carefully about the title, the tags, the description. All of those things are video clues. In fact, if you have the time and resources, a really good practice, if you're able to, is to get a transcription of the video, and you can post that right in the description, and you've given Google uh, text of your what your video is about that they can analyze. Remember, YouTube is owned by Google, so they do look at that stuff. Now, if that YouTube channel that you've posted the Hangout into, and you've optimized that video so Google understands what it's about, is connected to your personal account, that becomes part of your authorship profile. And as people engage with that video, just like if they engage with your Google Plus post, just like if they're engaging with your blog posts out on the web that are connected to your authorship, that all becomes a part of your authority graph. So and it's a long answer to say, yes, it does, <laughs> if you're creating those permanent videos out of it, and it will be all the more so in the future as they get better and better at even understanding what we're doing right now in, in talking to each other. Yes. And Alex, this is why I talk about, and this is why I say I do vlogging and we translate, we get transcript for a buck fifty a minute, right? Turn back to us from a machine in 48 hours and then you make sure it's correct. And so yeah, that, you, what in a nutshell Mark's saying, video SEO is where a hangout can be valuable now, but down the road, won't even need to do that probably. Yeah. So. But the, you know, the cool thing is that, keep in mind, Google is building this, this knowledge graph around you and around everything out there, the connections. And the more connections that you make, the more places you're posting content that's connected to your personal profile via authorship, via the fact that if it's on Google, that now because you have one Google account, one password to rule them all, Google can connect to anything that you do in, Google, in, in the Google universe uh, and increasingly to things outside. All of that's building a graph around you. Um, it's like a web, a universe that's being built around you that you're creating. And the deeper and the richer and the farther that, that goes, the more authoritative you look. At the end of the day, Google wants to bring the best up before people because that makes people happy, makes them come back to Google and they see those ads and that's where Google makes their money. So um, that's the things you do that make, that make them want to promote you. Uh, the one, one, John, do I have time to add one quick thing from the... Please, um, please. Yeah, yeah. I I'm, think, I'm only um, cutting it off because of where you're at, man. So. Oh no, no. I'm. <laughs> hey, I'm. If you guys want to go, I I love talking about this stuff, and I'm. It's Friday night. Um, you know, I won't, right. I've only I've only had one of these, so I'm sure. <laughs> um, uh, well, hang no, on. Before you go, before you go on, everybody, yeah. we're we're at the hour. I'm going to stay and talk to Mark until he's ready to go get another beer. You all are <laughs> welcome to drop off now if you want to hang on and enjoy the conversation. So there we go. Yeah, I, you know, I'll stay as long as anybody wants to chat. Great. Um, so, so that uh, that being said, um, yeah. That, so what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> Sorry. You were yeah. gonna say something and I interrupted. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. But but yeah, we're, I think we're getting an idea. Oh, just that out of out of the Matt Cutts um, keynote speech. Um, that you know, I thought it was very significant. A couple of things that, that I were my big takeaways is one, they're very actively pursuing this idea of subject area authorities. That's a big thing for them. And so you want to be building reputation as that. Um, everybody's an expert in something. Uh, 
do everything you can online and especially within Google Plus and the Google related things to be reinforcing that you are a credible expert in that and you do that not on both as we've been saying all night both by being a good creator of content for that and a great helper with that I think so much of the reason that I have whatever influence I have on Google Plus these days is because especially I still do it but especially in those early days I spent a lot of time just helping other people with the stuff I understood uh, I built the Google authorship community all about that and in the beginning now it's great because I have a lot of knowledgeable people in there I don't have to answer every post and I have a lot of great people that can help people in the beginning when I started that community it was me every day for free just you know helping people to get their authorship straight helping them understand how it works helping to get it connected correctly but every you know or everyone but those people a lot of them remember me you know I've made a friend they're thankful for me they're going to recommend me to others they're going to you know it's just that being helpful so that's the one thing the subject area authority and expertise the other is this is more of kind of a technical mechanical thing but I think it's interesting this was really news we hadn't heard this before he said they're going to start reducing the amount of the authorship what they call rich snippet search results that they show um, they uh, they've been pretty generous with it up to this point um, almost anybody can get it and once you get started and get up to a certain level of engagement your, your author photo is going to start showing next to search results he said he didn't say how much they're going to cut it back but he said that in tests that they've run when they cut down the number of um, author photos they showed in search by 10 to 15 percent the quality went way up uh, and when he says that you know what does he mean by that he means they Google watches your behavior not your individual but the aggregate behavior of people in, in regard to the search results so what do people click on first of all that's the first important metric but there's also something else that um, well Google's never confirmed this because they don't want people to game it um, those of us who watch and measure these things carefully are absolutely convinced they do this um, when you click on a search result a little clock starts inside of Google and it watches for if you come back to that search result page and especially if you come back to that search result page and then you click on another result for the same query now if if I go to if I click on a result that leads me to John's page and in 20 seconds I'm back in the search result clicking the next one down and a lot of people are doing that that sends a signal that when they clicked on John's result they didn't get what they were looking for Right. And they looked at it right away and said, like, this is trash, or this is not what I was searching for, or this is, you know, there's nothing interesting here, and they move on, and that, guess what? That search result will start to drop. They're, they're measuring that. Now, I throw all that in there, not to scare you or not to get you too deep into the, you know, under the hood of how this all works, but to say they are measuring those things. And they want, you know, so when they say the quality went up, I believe what they mean is, when we had fewer author photos showing, more people clicked on the author photos that were showing, and they were happier with those results. They they stayed there longer on that content. Right. So that means to me they are already evaluating who's the quality because they're not just eliminating random 10 to 15 percent. They're going after the junk first. Right. Um, and we were warned about this um, two months ago. They put out for the first time ever. They had what they called the advanced FAQ on Google authorship, and it only answered eight questions. It just took like eight questions that they get all the time about authorship, but you know those eight questions were were carefully de decided. This was a message they were sending, and the yeah. first question said, "There's a question saying like, what can I do to make sure that my author photo shows up in search and shows up more often?" And the answers that they gave were basically they were you know positive, do these things, these things, but really you got to read it from the negative. It's like if you're not following these guidelines you're going to start to disappear so it was things like only connect your authorship to original con to pages that have your original content that it's one piece of content uh, it's not a you know aggregate of stuff or it's not a collection or it's not a bunch of uh, not a product page or not just a page describing your book but it's something the equivalent of what you would see as a magazine article or a newspaper article it's the piece of original thoughtful content that represents a unique point of view um, that's what they're looking for for authorship to be connected to and I think the people who are doing that are going to be the ones who remain and by what they're saying are going to get even more benefit out of authorship so it's going to be a little bit of a 
um, evolutionary parent, uh, um, survival of the fittest going on in the coming months in the realm of authorship. Um, now, that does not mean, and I'm sorry I'm taking so much time with this, but I think these are important points. No, this is great. Okay. Definitely. That, that, I think, does not mean, because I can, I can hear some of you thinking this, um, well, then if I'm not already an authority, if I'm not already established, I'm, you know, I'm done. I, you know, I'm dead. I'm, I'm already in the water. They'll never show me. Not the case. Google does something, and we know they do this with search results. I'm sure they're doing it with authorship results. Google does something called sandboxing. Um, when something new pops up that they haven't seen before, not always, but quite often, if it, you know, if there's enough triggers in it that looks like this could be interesting, they will sometimes pop that up. We've seen this happen with search results. It'll suddenly pop up near the top of the search results. And you look at that, you look at it, and if you're doing, if you know how to do analytics, and you're looking at different metrics, you say, like, how did that happen? This thing has, like, no links to it. It's got no, you know, it was, the blog was built two weeks ago. You know, what is that doing at the top of the search results? Google is basically, like, you know, throwing it up in the air and see if it sticks, you know. Um, when they put that up there, do people click on it? Do they stay on it? Um, does it start to does it then start to build other signals around it, which means that they're going out there and they're sharing with their friends, and links are getting built to it and like that. So they're all the time experimenting with stuff. So if you're new in the search space, don't think I can never break in. Um, they want to find what's new and interesting out there, uh, and I believe they're going to do this with authorship. That if you're relatively new and they start to show your author result, you're not going to be in that 10 to 15 percent that gets excluded immediately. But you've got to prove yourself. And if, if, you know, if it looks like people aren't happy with what you're doing, you will get relegated to that, uh, to that chopped off point. Does that, does that make sense? And that's, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, <clears throat> you're describing the use of authorship in the correct way, basically. And, I, and I, I love the fact that, God bless him, but, man, I just had so many arguments with Mike Eline a year and a half ago over where this stuff goes and how to implement it. And well, you've talked with Mike. I know you know him, Mark. He's a great guy, but he's really about nuts and bolts SEO and the mechanics yeah. and how they work. You know, he was all over the, you know, the DCMA attacks and just when Penguin came out, he went nuts with the disavow and stuff. But this is, <clears throat> this is just part of the stop looking at the details and move back to the bigger picture yeah. effect. Okay. If you're writing quality content and you can get a conversation around it, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And you can add all of the SEO factors you want. You can do what you need to to improve quality, you know, get better at your formatting on your posts and get better images and start doing videos, whatever. All of that, all of those value adds, right, are simply value adds. The the point is still to produce content on a regular basis that people are interested in, that they find useful, and that you can talk about. Period. Mm -hmm. The end. And I built my business on very explicit keyword research web development, where we would create a complete keyword plan based on long tail keywords for a business to grow their website based on all of the old school SEO information that Mark and I have both been you know, digesting for years. At this point, I almost do that as a recursive process. It's let's find a few keywords that are good around your space that we can target for now, and let's write around them. But then let's wait three months and see what the universe has decided your space is. And then let's adjust our content and our conversation to target the most advantageous keyword space. So, uh, and my own per Portland Internet design, the way I did SEO before, which was a very structured, here are my terms, and here's the interlinking for those terms to where they go. Right? I, in my example, you guys in the SEO, in the um, Willamette Writers uh, Conference, I show you how I take search engine marketing consulting as a long tail phrase and do the on-page SEO to get myself to rank, you know, in the top 20 quickly. Well. The conversation I have as me in Google and on the web is not about search engine marketing consulting. I only did that as an as a example to show what you could do with blogging. But because of the changes in the algorithm that have happened since that example, and we're talking, what, a year ago? I mean, it wasn't that long ago when I put that up there. The changes in the algo, the changes in Google+, the changes to authorship, the Hummingbird update, my conversational space does not 
coincide. It, it's not congruent with that keyword. So Google said, you're not going to rank for this page as high as we had you before. You're not going to rank for this keyword space as high as we had you before because it's really not what you talk about. And, and so if I wasn't paying attention to that, or if you don't pay attention to that, you end up wasting a lot of your time and effort. So I know it's kind of confusing, but what I'm saying is just get out there and talk. Use the tools that Google gives us, analytics, webmaster tools, to see what keywords are being queried, right? Because Webmaster Tools gives us that information in, 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 a, in a generic sense. We've lost, you know, the, 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 we've lost phrase to broad match, and we've lost how to look at, you know, Google doesn't give us the keywords anymore, the, which is fine. The keywords that are directly related to the search queries on our site, we lost that, you know, and everybody in the SEO world freaked out. I think I mentioned this to you guys a couple weeks ago. Yeah. It, and anybody who really understands what we're doing here doesn't worry about it. The people that we're trying to gain the system are freaked. Okay. That's that's essentially what it comes down to. But but you guys can just write, see what happens, go look at the results, see what space Google's telling you you're about, and make adjustments in your conversation to focus it in where you want it to be. And so instead of focusing on a keyword space. You should be focused on your conversation and see what keyword space it derives. And I know that seems backwards, but Mark, it kind of seems like we've really come full circle. SEO isn't dead. We just come at it from a completely different viewpoint. You know? Yeah, it really is. And it's more, it's, it's more now than, it's becoming more now than ever, really, um, obviously at a, at a much larger scale because of what the Internet is and does. But it's, it's really the stuff that our you know, grandparents, our parents and grandparents did if they were in the business world. You know, I, I compare this often. It's you know, if you were, um, if you were in small town America, uh, the, the the America of Main Street Disneyland, uh, you know, uh, 70, 80, 100 years ago, you know, and you were you were the local, you were a businessman, you were the local hardware store owner or something like that. You know, what did you do? You uh, you went out and you joined the the Lions Club and you joined the Rotary Club and you. You know, you you got in a good local church, and you you know you went to the mayor's, you went to lunch with the mayor, you know, whatever you know, you 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 related with people, you built networks, um, because those people would be telling their neighbor, you know, you know, oh you want you know you want the, the best hardware store in town is Bill's down on the corner, you know, he, he helps me out. Um, it's really almost back to that that world again, but then combined also with. Uh, because we live now in an increasingly knowledge-based economy, the value of knowledge, and that's that's what content really is, um, sharing knowledge. You know, I, I try to create, I know John does, a lot of us try to create a tremendous amount of, of content. It's hard work, but the content is really there. It's displaying of our wares. Um, it's, what, uh, it's what convinces people that I know that I'm talking about. Uh, the stuff that I've written and the videos I've made and put out there is the reason why I'm here tonight. Is, you know, John, and the reason why John got as excited as he did when I said, like, yeah, you know, I, I'll come and do the hangout with you tonight. You know, why would he do this? Is this because he likes because I'm a nice guy? You know, certainly not that. It's, uh, it's because... <laughs> that included. You know, it, it's because he's read, you know, he's read my stuff, he's followed, he's listened to me over the last year or whatever, and he, you know, I've done enough of that that he... I you know fooled him into thinking he I know what I'm talking about, um, but but that opens that you know seriously that that opens the doors for you and we're moving. Uh, this is I'm going to get in a sermon here, but we are moving. I'm convinced of it. We're in a, a huge, amazing transition period between the old industrial economy and the new. What some people call the connected economy. Yes. And in the old industrial economy. It was win lose. You know, there's a few people at the top that win really big, and everybody else is just the worker bees or, or left out of the pie altogether. In, uh, and and you hoard in the old industrial economy, you have to hoard the resources, and you have to you know make sure nobody else gets the resources and keep them for yourself. In the new connected economy, it's the opposite. It's abundance. It's sharing. That's what works. The yes. more you the more you give away of your knowledge, your expertise, the more that comes back to you. And I don't just mean that in some kind of you know ugly karmic spiritual way. Um, I mean that really. I mean that yeah. that works. Um, 
Well, I'll just say one more thing about that, then I'll shut up. But it's just like it's, <laughs> somebody. I, I wish I could remember who I heard say this the other day. It just, it just, or a few weeks ago, but it just really resonated with me. Why that whole thing works. Somebody said to them, you know, you give so much stuff away. Don't you realize people are ripping you off? Like you, you tell them how to do the stuff for free. You know, and and they can just read all your blog posts and you know, read all your eBooks and and go and do it, and they're not even paying you anything for that. You know, that's stupid. Why are you giving that away? And he said, because, yes, he said, it's absolutely true. 98% of the people that read my stuff will never pay me a dime. He said, actually, like, 96% of those people will never do any of it anyways. <laughs> so right. I'm not really worried about that. That's, that's a whole other story. <laughs> and if 2% of them go out and do it and make a billion dollars at it, God bless them. That's, that's fantastic. The fact of the matter is, I'm doing all that to build the authority, to build the community, to build the network, to build the impression around myself that 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 five percent or whatever, you know, two percent, two three percent people out there who have the money, have the resources, and understand the value of what I do, and because I've demonstrated through all these other people, they see all these other people talking about, about Mark Trapping and knows about this, and he's the expert on that, he's like that. Those people come and they say, like, yeah, I could read all your blog posts. I could, I could go do this myself, but I, I don't have time for that. I'm running a business. I've, I've got this or that to do. I'm going to hire you to do it for me, or I'm going to hire you to help me to, to do it because I, I know you understand it. And that's all I need. That's where the, the – the, the, my wife just poked in the door and she said she married me so she doesn't have to have me. <laughs> uh, I didn't hear what you say. Yeah, like, yeah. She's she's executive director of a nonprofit, and she says like she's like I want to hire you, so I don't have to do that anymore. Um, <laughs> but uh, she doesn't have any money, so um, <laughs> she does get plenty of free advice. Um, but uh, but yeah, so sermon over. But that that's how that works, um, and it really really does work. Um, but remember that thing we said back in the beginning. It doesn't work instantly. It's a it, right. it, it, it it's an it's a it's a bank that you're investing in every day, and you, know, you put in you put in you put in you think you're getting nothing out, and one day all of a sudden that investment starts to go to work for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. What did what did you you bring up a great point? What did Matt Cut say at PubCon? He said social signals are a long term road, right? Yes, a long term effort. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was so important to hear. First time I've ever heard him say it that way. That was. I'm glad you brought that up, John. That was so important. Yeah, just to emphasize for those of you that didn't get to read the, the report yet, um, one of the most amazing things he said, and I, I know why this came up because there's been like this big last, especially three or four months, there's been this big controversy in our little world of SEO and all and search and all that stuff over this idea of social signals, and especially plus ones. Uh, and it happened because a couple of big um, uh, content agencies out there. Moz, I mentioned them earlier. Another one called Search Metrics in Germany. They're very influential. Publish these very detailed studies where they they do these they run these complex mathematical studies where basically they look at here's here's brands out there that we know rank high in search. What are all the things that those brands seem to have in common that rank high in search? And to what percent? And what what they found was more recently was that the brands who tend to rank the highest in search also tend to have a lot of plus ones, a lot of retweets, a lot of likes on Facebook, you know, these social signals, as we call them. So that some people ran with that and said, aha, getting a lot of plus ones will make you rank higher. Right. Um, I don't know if any of you are from any kind of science or math background, but you, one of the things you, first things you learn is correlation does not necessarily equal causation. Mm -hmm. um, but these people are making that leap, that assumption. You know, it's like saying that, uh, uh, you know, more um, more ice cream is sold on um, hot days. You know, does uh, therefore hot days cause ice cream sales? You know. Right. There might be an indirect relationship there, but it's not a direct relationship. You know, the sun isn't beaming down and causing, you know, making people go zombie-like to buy, buy ice cream. Um, so, long story short, that because that blew up. Now, you know, just quickly, so why is that correlation there? We can't know exactly with any correlation, but one 
I think, very big possibility is the sites that are doing the right things to rank well are also the kind of sites that are so good and valuable that, of course, people are plus wanting them and liking them and sharing them. And, of course, they have those social signals around them. Sure. But here's the, more, here's the more important thing. Just, just I'll get to the point. Um, that blew up so big that Matt Cutts had to actually step in to a, a comment thread on a very influential um, uh, SEO and, and, and web development site and say, plus ones do not influence search rankings directly. Rarely did you hear Matt Cutts make a declarative, simple statement like that. Yeah. We had yeah. to cut it off. So I think that's what led to the, led to the statement at PubCon. But now let's get to that statement at PubCon because that's the real important meat here. So what do social signals do? Are they, are they no good whatsoever? Are they just nice badges to have? No. What he said is that while they don't do anything for you in the short term, you can't expect, like, if I get 50 plus ones, then my keywords will go up three positions in search. It doesn't work that way. But what does happen, he says, they're, they're a long-term signal. If over uh, a long period of time, you are consistently and more and more getting those social signals all the time around you, that's building. There's something that Google's talked about in the past called the trust graph. And we don't know all what that means, but so, something that they want to be able to evaluate. Like, how much do people trust you? And if you're getting those social signals consistently over the long haul, that's a confirming signal. It's not the direct ranking signal, but it, 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 it's, like, it's like a confirming cloud around you of goodness <laughs> that all of the things being equal, they're going to pump up the person who appears to be trusted over the long haul of time over the person who just pops up in, you know, out of nowhere. Does that, does that make some sense? Yeah, absolutely. And let me, let's, let's, let's break this apart, too, because we're talking about how the social signals are going to affect your authority in the Google search engine, okay? Google ranking, Google whatever, let's just, in Google. But remember, outside of the Google aspect of things, all of those signals still yes. amount to your visibility on the web. Yes. So who cares what Google's doing with it? Because if Google Plus is hopping and you're out there doing the engagement and you've got social signals happening, you're going to get found. Mm -hmm. You're going to get shared. You're going to grow authority when we talk about those shared circles. Even though shared circles have pitfalls, okay, and we've talked about that. You don't want to get into that whole circle jerk mentality where you're just passing things around because then you you end up growing a follower base but it's a follower base of people who really don't know why they're following you yeah. right they're you know I, I don't know I think it was Joshua Berg I, I don't know who wrote it but it was a great article a few weeks back or no it was Dustin Stout Dustin, it, was, yeah. mm -hmm. it was regarding the big dogs your follower count is not important it's how good those people are to you how connected mm -hmm. you are with them how strong is the relationship remember in in the social relationship sex we talk about guys that you know you're 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 holding hands you're going out to dinner you're you're doing the things that are relationship related and so if you have 50 people that you've taken out to dinner wined and dined and who are just ecstatic over you those 50 people could do the same as 5,000 people who just followed you because of a shirt. All right. That's so. Yeah. So remember. Let me, let me tell, let me yeah, tell a quick. Okay. Let me tell a quick tale about that. You know, literal tale. This is just like two months ago. I was. I had built up very close. You have a, you have a limit of 5,000 people that you can follow on Google Plus. 5,000 people you can put into circles. And I got up close to that limit because in the early days, when I was trying to get started on Google Plus, I think this is a mistake now, but I did it. You know, I, I was following everybody. I mean, anybody that followed me, I'd follow them back and just trying to get, you know, something going. And I was following people. So I ended up with a, and I entered a lot of those circle jerks and circle, you know, junkie circle shares and things like that. Um, and I had, I accumulated a lot of junk in my, in my following. Now, now here's the amazing thing. I, I, it took me almost an entire Saturday. It was about two months ago. I finally said, I'm going to clean this thing up. And it really did. I sat down and went from you know 4,500 down to 1,500 people I was following. It was a lot of cut. There was that much junk, you know. And there was these people like they're just posting. They either weren't, weren't posting anything, or they're just posting crap, or you know, goofy stuff, or stuff I wasn't interested in. Um, and I cut that back. And then you know what happened? Within a short time after that, I started seeing my following, my follower count, take a rapid increase. And I said, now, why did that happen? I cut back on the number of people I was following. Why did it go up? 
I think I know why. It's just a theory, but I, I really think it's this. Because I cut all that crap out of my circles, I was it cleared away the noise. And now when I went in my stream and I'm looking, I'm seeing more good stuff, you know, stuff that's relevant and good and quality. And so I can share more of that into my stream and engage more with that. And that builds the bridges that we were talking about earlier that get you seen by more people and followed by more people. So, you know, that's that's good advice, John. You know, don't you, you guys are still at the beginning. You can do it right from the beginning. Um, don't fall into that temptation of thinking you got to follow anything that moves. Um, you know, build. Don't don't get over persnickety, but you know, build. Um, and I'm not. We wouldn't say. I don't think John would say either. That, not saying that everybody in your circle has to be a prime mover or a right. high influencer or you know an expert. You can have friends in there. You can have fun. You can have great, you know, regular people. But <laughs> I guess just the lesson here is, um, you know, don't don't fill it up with junk. Keep it concentrated, um, and you'll get more value out of it, and that will build more value for you out of the long run. Absolutely. It's, uh, man, this has been phenomenal. Um, I will be honest, though, I need to hit the little boy's room. Okay. So, uh, and, yeah. and I'm guessing you probably want to get another beer, Mark. Um, yeah, it's getting it's down to down to here. Yeah, so. it, and it's probably warm at this point. And I I remember from the Denver Hurl, warm beer was a bad thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any final things they'd like to ask Mark before we we head out? This has just been absolutely phenomenal, and uh, I hope we can do it again uh, another yeah. time, Mark. But does anybody sure. have any final questions? Just that. Uh, Kathleen, her comments and back and forth with Mark uh, also relate directly to me, so I do appreciate both the questions and the answers. Terrific. Thank you. I'm so glad. Uh, I'm just, you know, my parting shot is, is part of the reason that I do these things is I was a teacher for 20 years. Um, I was an English teacher, actually, writer guys, and taught writing, uh, done a lot of writing, so, you know, you are near and dear to my heart. Um, and I, but there's still a lot of that teacher in me. I, I enjoy it, and I get a get a real thrill out of um, helping other people to learn things. So, this is a to me, this is just a fun way to spend a Friday night. Um, I really enjoyed it. Well, we we're glad you enjoyed it because we did. <laughs> oh, terrific. Well, that that's all very, I need to hear. That's very helpful. That's that's all the pay I need. Um, yeah. Wonderful, uh, Mark. I'll listen to this uh, many times. Oh, terrific. I'll get it in my brain. Yeah, and 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 please. Uh, please, I really, really mean this. Uh, you know, two things is you know, feel free to to reach out to me with questions on Google Plus. Uh, you know, I uh, I will do my best if I can answer them. I will, uh, or point you to resources. And remember what I said earlier: that deal stands. Uh, yes. Send me a a piece of content that you're proud of, and I will share that out to my network. Will do. Great, thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Very it. kind of you. Awesome. All right. Thank you all so much. We will. Uh, We'll connect tomorrow or this next week about doing the, the Hangout. I'm sure all of you are in, in a fine place with your homework. Everybody that's been watching live, we've had Mark Trapp hanging on here, and it's been phenomenal. Mark's with Bronte Marketing. And uh, Bronte, I basically, let's put it this way, Mark. I don't do marketing. If I were going to send people to any company, it would be yours. There are a billion marketing firms out there. I know you guys are boutique specialists, but... You're doing it right, and so I'll just throw that out there. Everything you guys are saying I, almost takes me out of the loop because I could just tell my guys to go read your blog. So, oh. yeah. thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, John, very much. And uh, I'm very excited about what you're creating here, what you're doing. I want to learn a lot more about it. Uh, I'm really just learning about what what you guys are doing, and it's fascinating. This this whole thing, man, this is just great. You know, it's like uh, we talked about. I might have, you know, when I was in education. You know, cohort learning. That was the that was the buzzword and the thing, and, but you know, then you have to bring people together and a and, and physical place. You're doing that right here, yeah. you know, sitting in our bedrooms and living rooms all across the country. This is amazing. It's just an incredible. What a, what a great tool uh, for education. It's exactly. Oh, I can't wait to talk. This this is what we're doing. I want to change the education model and make it fun. Yeah, and you and I you and I need to talk a lot more, John. All righty then. All right, we will for Good. now so that we can all get to our respective fluids. Uh, everybody have a good evening. And we will Either talk incoming later. or outgoing. <laughs> <laughs>